This is part two of the Seneca Falls lathe restoration. This video, we're gonna be working on the headstock. Lots of fun stuff in this video that is the reason we changed our entire approach to this. But since you guys are here, I just wanted to say thank you for the support in the last video. I really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe and uh, something to look forward to is we may or may not be doing a lost wax casting video that has to do with this lathe. But that's all you get. So enjoy the video. Okay, I will unscrew the, the front too. Well, you unscrew the back too. You had the screwdriver. Oh, we really need to lost your screwdriver. Huh? I said I almost lost your screwdriver. I know. Hello everybody. Today we're starting off with undoing the headstock contraption here. Uh, we started off by unscrewing the four bolts that hold it down with those caps and then now we're kind of fiddling looking around to make sure we don't overlook anything and then undoing that cap at the back and now we're just going to kind of wiggle it out. All came out good. Uh, we were messing with that low gear uh, contraption back there and we just ended up wiggling it around and then leaving it. <laughs> uh, here we are kind of scotch breading to see how much damage we have here because this was a pretty sad, sad sight when we uh, uncovered that and then saw the amount of galling and just absolute like tearing that happened on the casting because they didn't actually end up using bearings they just used at just the direct casting for a bearing uh, and probably wasn't oiled mixture with that and maybe metal shavings or sand something getting in there Obviously, power washing everything. The amount of just disgusting grease and wood shavings that were on here. I mean, you can see it all on the ground there. It was pretty crazy. I mean, even the power washer couldn't even get it all off. Uh, but it helps for the majority. And here we are taking files to the inside there. We also did it to the caps. Uh, don't get mad at this. This is just the best solution we could come up with. As for the bore, you can see that this was absolutely jammed in there with uh, the dead center and a Morse taper adapter. We went full ham with a mallet and a bar of metal to get those things out. And I mean, I don't even know if I want to know what the bore looks like. Uh, here we are honing the bore, I guess. Uh, the amount of damage that was on this was pretty, pretty saddening as well, but it wasn't as bad as the casting. So. We just ended up cleaning it all off on my lathe anyway, uh, you know, doing a little bit of work just to where there wasn't, you know, rigid high spots and all that. Uh, it wasn't really that. We didn't really take much material off at all, if any. Uh, obviously, putting it back together, but um, obviously, we took the time to forget a very crucial part. Uh, actually, I'm not really sure if it's crucial, but the oil rings... Uh, that's what I'm gonna call them. Not really sure if that's what they're really called. Uh, we completely forgot to put those in there, so here we are taking it back apart and then putting the oil rings on, slipping it back in, and redoing those again. Thankfully, it, it's a very simple, you know, hold down with those four screws uh, amongst that one nut. Uh, that's what we're gonna call it. So obviously, after finally getting it back together, we need to celebrate. After celebrating, you can go ahead and get your ratchet extensions and pass them through with oily paper towels to clean your bore out. And then after that, you're done. Da -da -da. Outro, outro, outro. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's any <laughs> questions or, uh, you know, concerns. ideas, concerns, <laughs> complaints, put them in the comments below. As you've seen in the video, we stoned the spindle to remove all the high spots. Uh, and we took a final to the caps and the main bearings, the casting, the headstock itself, uh, to remove the high spots there. So there shouldn't be anything dragging metal metal wise. Uh, but it's still nice and tight. There's no shimming, there's no shaking. Uh, so it's all nice and sturdy in that regard.
Uh, yeah, basically we just did that to s minimize the amount of galling damage. and damage that can increase. But for now, the plan is to just run it. So we we like line bore it first line bore. and remove like a quarter inch material in total. Oh yeah. And then make a sleeve of uh, bronze mm -hmm. or brass or whatever we plan to use. Put that in, get it line bored again, and then we can slide the spindle in. Yeah. If we even want to do that. Which, Maybe it's tight can. right now. The lathe is perfectly usable at the headstock is right at this moment, so maybe in the future. So obviously you didn't see the chuck here. This is a, a temporary chuck, but I think it's gonna work pretty well for now. Uh, you know, chucks are expensive, so if we don't have to buy it, that's nice. But so far, all we need to do with this thing is uh, fix maybe the oilers here, just to where they're a little bit nicer. And then obviously we still have to paint everything, so we are planning on taking everything back apart again uh, and then reassembling after paint. But yeah, so that's pretty much it for the video. Take care.